Alrighty, let's start by having you say and spell your name. My name is Katie Smith, spelled K-A-T-I-E, Smith, <laughs> S-M-I-T-H. And what's your title here? I am a brewer at Highland Brewing. Okay. So today is Friday, June 29th. We're at Highland Brewing in Asheville, North Carolina, doing an interview for the Wellcrafted NC Project. So Katie, can you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself, your background, where you're from, and so what So I'm born and raised in Asheville. Um, I always tell people it's like, you know, almost finding a unicorn because no one's from here, actually. Um, yeah, so born and raised in Asheville, uh, you know, grew up in Arden, which is like the suburbs of Asheville, I guess. Um, then I did, well, I actually danced my whole life, tap, jazz, ballet, yeah, and was too short to be a dancer, so, like professionally. So I went into nursing school, wasn't a big fan of that, and then turned 21, and I was like, you know what? I kind of like this whole beer thing that's happening in Asheville. Like, you know, I kind of thought, why don't I do marketing? So um, I thought, okay, I can't market a product unless I know it. So Blue Ridge Community College had just started their brewing program. I think they were in their second semester or something like that. So living in Arden, I was like, you know, AB Tech also had one, but I was like, I'll, you know, do Blue Ridge because they were partnered with Oscar Blues. So went and started the brew program there and one of the cool things was it was like the first class was you sit in a classroom on Mondays for like three hours and then on Wednesdays you go and do like hands-on stuff at Oscar Blues which is really cool um, so I took that class and like a sensory class I also took a welding class <laughs> so I was like you know make me more marketable um, but the first class I took, I kind of automatically fell in love with the brewery and just the whole like recipe creation and doing all that. So I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to switch over to maybe brewing. Um, and my te well, the like teacher at Oscar Blues actually inspired me to, because uh, he worked at Craggy Brewing way back when. Uh, started out just working for beer. So he's like, you know, if you want to get into it, you know, just go volunteer somewhere. So I emailed anybody and everybody in Asheville. Yeah, like, I mean, everybody. I was like, you know what? I'll come in, I'll stir in hops, I'll scrub the floor, whatever. So I emailed Twin Leaf, which was up and coming. They had, they had a building, but that was about it. Hmm. Um, and the, one of the owners emailed me back and was like, we don't need anybody, but we need a bartender. And I was like, great I'll you know so I interviewed for that got the job and I mean I was there painting walls babysitting their child um, you know cleaning up dust and debris and wood and everything before they opened. because you know it was like a good little while before they opened um, which was really cool to see that and still in school at the time for brewing and um, so Twin Leaf opens the assistant brewer they had, uh, lo and behold, his wife all of a sudden is pregnant. So it's like, okay, well, we're gonna move back home closer to family. So that position was open. So I remember I was sitting with the two owners of Twin Leaf at Burial, drinking a beer, and we were talking, and he's like, I'm, I'm gonna have to hire help. Like, I can't do this by myself. So I was like, you know, well, I'm in school for it. Why don't I try it out? So um, they were like, you know, yeah, we'll talk about it and see. So then like that following Monday, they were like, yeah, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so actually, I left school. I hadn't finished it yet, but it was <laughs> bartending and brewing. Yeah, so I, I had no life for a good <laughs> couple of years. Because <laughs> I mean, I was, which I loved Twin Leaf because I got to do the marketing side, I was brewing, I was bartending, I was doing all, I literally hand delivered kegs in the back of my car. Um, so I missed that from like the small brewery. But so after that, um, I mean, I, I just had no life. And so I was like, okay, I need something, you know, with like benefits and have like an adult job kind of thing. So um, I actually met Holly Stevenson, who used to be our master brewer. And she was like, you know, well, we're looking for a person at Highland. Do you want to come and apply? And I was like, sure. So I uh, came and applied here and got the job. And it's been almost three years now. 
Wow. Yeah. Um, so as you've kind of gone through, other than the uh, Blue Ridge program, what other kinds of resources have you drawn on to kind of help you grow as a brewer? Um, definitely Pink Boots has been awesome. Um, I mean, one of the last meetings we had was a marketing panel, which is, has been so helpful uh, just outside of stuff um, because I'm also on the Asheville Beer Week committee and I'm the chapter leader here in Asheville for Pink Boots Society. So that has helped. Um, and also like the Asheville Brewers Alliance in Asheville has been great. I've gone to malt conferences when there was the whole, you know, thing with ALE. There was a meeting about that. We talked to like the board people of ALE and they talked about, you know, how much you can serve, all this other stuff. So, I mean, just, yeah, I would say Asheville Brewers Alliance and Pink Boots. And there's some awesome, like, you know, craft brewer conferences that you can go to as well. But usually it's kind of a sales pitch as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned a couple of specific folks, but are there particular people who you really kind of consider to be mentors or major have made a major impact on your career? I would probably say Holly because she's always like, yeah, the person, if I have a question, I'll like text her. <laughs> Even now that she's in Baltimore, I'll be like, yeah, hitting up Holly. Yeah. Yeah. And just because, you know, she's being a female in this industry and her, you know, unlike me, she has traveled all over. So she's seen all kinds of different things. So it's a, she's a great resource for all that. Yeah. So what would you say is your favorite part of the brewing job? Hmm. Well, other than the beer, <laughs> of course. Um, I mean, I guess the community is by far my favorite, um, just because we have such an amazing community in Asheville. And like, actually, uh, we the day it flooded here, when you guys can come up, um, we were in a frenzy because we could not brew one of our beers because we were a bag short of chocolate malt. So. Lo and behold, I text Highwire and I say, hey, can we borrow a bag of malt where you have somebody coming in and they can pick it up on their way in? And they're like, yeah, totally. So, I mean, and we've done that. I've done that when I was a Twin Leaf where, you know, it's like, shit, we don't have yeast. We don't have this malt. Hold on. Let me text somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's by far, I think, my favorite part. I mean, it's not day-to-day -day stuff, but um, just having that network around you is amazing. But, like, day-to-day, -day, it's... Um, you know, just, I don't know, it's a good feeling. Like, even though you are sweating your ass off and, yeah, you know, you come home smelling like beer and you're sticky and it's just, yeah, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, well, I always tell people, because my parents are both teachers, so I'm like, you know, I never was going to be a teacher ever, having parents as teachers. And I was like, the best thing about my job is, like, you know what? When you have a shitty day, you just walk a few steps and there's a beer right there. <laughs> like, to make the day so much better. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like, and you're like, you know what? I made this. So, it's not as terrible as it could be. Yeah. So, I guess, yeah, it's just having that feeling at the end of the day where it's like, you know what? It's not that bad. Yeah. I can do this. Can you talk a little bit more about kind of the, I guess, the feeling that you get when you are able to just drink a beer and be like, no, that's mine. It's still really weird, kind of. I mean, like my boyfriend will say, because we'll be out and about and someone's drinking Highland, and um, he's like, you realize you made that? I'm like, yeah, like, yeah, probably. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's like, you know, probably 100% <laughs> true that I made that. But still, it's just weird to see that out. And like, you know, when I go out of state and see like the Highland beer, and I'm like, yeah, I made that. That's, that's weird <laughs> to see that big of a reach. Um, and I do, I remember my first beer I ever made, like, you know, my recipe, everything was at Twin Leaf. And, um, God, for like a whole week, I was like looking on Untapped to see reviews and all this other stuff, which I no longer have because it's just, opinion, people with technology and opinions doesn't work too well sometimes. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a really cool feeling. And it's a cool feeling to, you know, have people come up to me and they're like, oh my God, I love that. Like, especially small batches, because you have something that, you know, you put a lot more time into. Whereas Gaelic, 
I mean, I tell people, I'm like, I could brew it with my eyes closed. Yeah. Um, but when you make a recipe and like do like do that whole thing, it's a lot. It's really cool. It makes you feel good. Can you talk a little bit about your recipe development process and kind of what goes into some of these small batch beers that y'all do? Well, actually, it's so the first. Well, no, because I mean, I've made a few like beers for pink boots uh like beer de femme and all that mm -hmm. other stuff uh and like the big collaboration brew but um that was like a joint effort between me and holly um and it's really like you know you're kind of out drinking beer and you're like i will you know you see something cool or one thing i do love is uh watching the cooking channel and like <laughs> any new like weird thing like chopped is great because you'll find all these weird things and you're like, what the hell is that? And then you think, that would be cool in that beer. And so it's just kind of like, you know, your mind is playing with all these ideas. And um, I do, I was telling somebody, because uh, me and another brewer are working on these beers. And um, the next one I want to make is like a beer-wine hybrid. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's like our smallest system is a three-barrel. So I'm like, I still, I don't want to dump three barrels of beer. <laughs> And you know, I don't home brew anymore because it's like, I just don't want to go home and brew more. But um, yeah, it's it's really fun to like, you know, just mess with all that. And you just have to, in your head, think about what goes with what. And yeah, go eat a lot of raw malt and herb, well, you know, like malt out of the bag, so. Yeah, so what, you know, we talked about your favorite part. What, what would you say is your least favorite part of being a brewer? Probably the hours. At the moment, uh, we are upping production and I've been coming in at 3 a.m., 4.30. Um, yeah, and our last person usually gets out at like 12.30 at night. So, yeah. I mean, and now, I've, so I've been on the 6 a.m. shift, well, 6 a.m. Or, or, or earlier shift for the past three weeks and now I'm shifting to the four to midnight shift for the next three weeks. So, I mean, you have no schedule. Yeah, that's kind. Of, that's by far, I think, the hardest part, and that's production style. So, yeah, it is what it is, and it's like you know, my body just does not want to do manual labor at eleven o'clock at night. So, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. hard to get used to that. So, uh, you know, your schedule shifts around, but do you all have like a typical? Could you say there's a typical production cycle? What 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 does that look like here? Um, so typically, before we started upping our bat, our size, our amount, um, we typically come in at six and then leave at midnight and we will brew four batches of beer that day. So four 50 barrel beer, like batches. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, we'll split it either, you know, we have 200 barrel tanks and 100 barrel tanks and now we actually have two 50 barrel tanks. So, um, you know, we'll do two different beers in a day or one beer and then like, in the winter, it's kind of nice because we'll brew a beer, do like brew house clean and then like foam and clean and take apart stuff and do uh, maintenance. So it's a little bit more chill in the winter, but um, yeah, it's, you know, mash in at 6 a.m., mash in at 9, 10, mash in at like 2 and then 6. So, yeah. yeah. Can you talk a little bit about like how much you're producing? How many beers? Well, you usually could have going at once. Yeah. So, well, we have, I think we're up to 26 fermenters and seven bright tanks. And so recently we've been brewing like 1,100 barrels a week. So, you know, a barrel, a half barrel is 31 gallons. So 62 gallons or 62 gallons times... 1100 is a week wow yeah it's a lot yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um thinking industry-wide uh, where do you see brewing going i mean you know yeah and actually before we do that let's re reflect back because you've been doing this for a while now yeah yeah how, how has brewing changed since you started well, just the kind of ridiculousness on the market at times, I think of first. Um, I mean, everybody, it's, it's kind of gimmicky at times. And uh, I mean, 
personally, like I am all for like simple lagers, like a good clean beer. I feel I always tell people, I'm like, that's, I feel like the hardest thing to make because you can't cover it up with hops and all that other shit. Um, but I mean, just the stuff I see on the market now, it's like, I, I don't even want to drink that. Like, I mean, I saw something on Facebook about an avocado beer. Yeah. And I'm like, and there's, you know, there's a beer in Asheville. I don't know if it's still around, but, uh, they put pizza in it. Yeah. And I love pizza, but no. Um, so it's, I mean, I'm kind of like thinking back to probably even before I was able to brew or anything uh, where it's like, God, I miss those like good solid beers. Now it's, it's, I, it's not really beer. Yeah. I mean, so I don't know. And you know, it's funny cause uh, the big thing with women right now, I guess is the glitter beer, which I'm like, no, cause I am not a big pink or <laughs> glitter or any of that fan. You was long time ago but I'm like no I'm not putting glitter in my beer <laughs> so but yeah it's all you could, yeah if you can somehow put it in a kettle people are gonna do it yeah yeah and thinking forward though where do you like what trends do you see moving forward or where do you see kind of brewing going in five six years who knows um oh well that's like I do think it's interesting I've been seeing stuff about people can buy these small little homebrew things where it's like literally a coffee pot almost type situation. Yeah. You, there's some that have, it looks like a liter like soda bottle and it has the extract or whatever. You put it in this machine and you know, it takes like two weeks or something and you have your own beer. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, and all kinds of like, and I mean, you know, they're like yay big and I'm like, that beer can't be good. But um, that's, I guess, one of those things, I don't know if it's gonna last, but, um, well, you know, people will love the idea that they can be a hipster and make their own craft beer at home. But um, yeah, that's, I think one thing is, you know, everybody's gonna think, oh yeah, I can make craft beer at home. And I do think, and actually I've, we've kind of seen this in Asheville because we have AB Tech and Blue Ridge here, and because it's such a big beer area, we have a lot of people who think, oh, I can make beer. I'm gonna open a brewery. So it's like, eh, no, no. So um, we are, I mean, I've talked to people, you know, the question is when is the bubble gonna burst or whatever? Um, and I've heard it phrased differently too, but um, I don't know if, it's going to reach a peak where, you know, people are making shitty beer at home and shitty beer is flooding the market. I don't know. I hope to God it doesn't happen. But, um, yeah, I want to go back to the simplistic thing personally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have a particular style that you, you like the best? Well, so... A nice basic? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That and... Uh, one thing I played around with at Twin Leaf was like uh, flower beers or like beers that you forage for ingredients. Um, like Fanta Flora does a lot of cool stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Burial has done some stuff like that. But, and I, I've talked to Tim a lot. I heard he was just overseas talking about flower beers. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's just kind of cool to have that like, you know, hippy dippy kind of Mother Earth connecting with the beer and it all being natural and um so that I think is like one of my favorite things is like the you know the natural adjuncts and you know it's kind of going even going back to like mead and all the, you know dandelion wine stuff like that so it's, yeah going way 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 back um so stuff like that and like um I love yeah any good crisp lager like uh the first beer I made here after coming back from Germany was a Hellas and it was delicious. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, you kind of touched on this already, but let's talk a little bit about when you first came yeah. to Holland. Yeah. What was it that initially attracted you to the position here? Mainly uh, just Highland having such a big, like, I guess footprint or whatever in Asheville. I mean, growing up here, I was telling somebody the other day, um, I, at a young age, I saw my first kegerator at my uncle's house, and he had Green Man and Highland on tap. 
And so, I mean, Highland was always a thing for me. Um, and I mean, it, well, it's, um, so even like Barley's, where they started, um, every year for my birthday, because I love pizza, I always go to Barley's for my birthday, like celebration, kind of like get together with family. Um, so it's kind of that connection with Barley's and Highland and all that. I do remember my, like on my 21st birthday, the first beer I ordered was a cold mountain. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and so now it's like I make it and that's amazing just to see that line that is outside. It's, it's like Christmas time here. It's great. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just, they've been such a big impact on this community. It was. I mean, it was, I was kind of giddy when I like got the job here that it's like, I'm going to work for Highland Brewing. That's, that's awesome. Like they've <laughs> stood the test of time kind of in Asheville. So, um, I still wish I was, you know, if I was only born like three years later, we could have had the same like birthday, but you know, <laughs> that would have been a whole different thing, but whatever. <laughs> so but, close. I know. I know. My brother was the same year, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how would you define the main mission of Highland? Ooh, um, or the theme, however you want to think of it. I was about to say, well, so mainly because I was here for the whole rebranding thing, the new thing is, um, you know, we're the, uh, what is it? We're like the, I can't think of the word. Um, but like, we're trailblazers or something like that. Um, so like, you know, paving the path for craft beer in Asheville. Um, and yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, I would say Highland is not, not typically very gimmicky with their beer. Um, it's kind of true to, what, to, true to Highland, except for our pilot batches do feel a little weird, but um, yeah, it's, you know, yeah, it's like we're here, you know, we changed a little bit, but um, we're still kind of the same Highland that was here so many years ago yeah yeah so uh this is probably an easy question what would you say is highland's signature beer oh gaelic can you talk a little bit about like what goes into gaelic yeah uh well it's two row c40 c60 and extra special and then you have um crap i think is it Centennial? I'm, I can see the box and where it is in the <laughs> hop cooler. Um, yeah, I think it's Centennial for the boil. And then Willamette and Cascade for the Whirlpool. Um, and yeah, it's just, I mean, I've never actually been a huge fan of Gaelic. It's a good beer. I, will, I appreciate that, but it's typically not my style. Um, and I do love it. Even when I worked at Twin Leaf, I had people come up to me and they're like, so what beer do you have that tastes like Gaelic? And I'm like, that's a really low, that's, that's a hard, like, how am I going to answer that? Because there's not really that much in town that's like Gaelic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, my brother loves it. Uh, so, I mean, people just love that beer. It's like, I guess, like Coca-Cola in the <laughs> South or something. I don't know. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, and you know we make it at least once or twice a week, uh, so yeah, it's it's one of those beers. Yeah. yeah. And can you talk a little bit about some of the other, I guess, the standards yeah. that you guys have here, have here? Well, I mean, I remember the first beer I ever tried from Highland was Saint T's, and my mom still adores that beer. Um, but at the moment, my favorite here is Vacation, which um, it's just super light. And I mean, the thing is, it's like I'm usually like you know i'm out and about with people and it's like i want to have more than one beer so these eight ten whatever percent beers it's like no i don't i don't want that um but yes yeah, so we have gaelic saint t's oatmeal porter mocha stout um and then the pilsner and then the avl ipa which is good um but i'm not a big IPA fan personally like super hoppy um and then <laughs> being oh so helpful um and like one of my favorite seasonals is Thunderstruck even though I don't drink coffee that is just an amazing beer um 
And then Cold Mountain, everybody goes crazy for that. Which, I mean, it's a good beer, but you know, yeah. Sometimes you go crazy for tradition and... Yeah. Oh God, yeah, it's just that, like that Christmas feeling. It's exciting. So. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the rebranding a second yeah. ago. Did that, did you guys change any of the recipes with the rebranding or was it really just the packaging? Um, we did change the IPA. We had the just straight up IPA and we changed it slightly to now AVL IPA. And that's just, I think we changed the hops a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a more smooth beer. Yeah. Um, and when we were talking with Leah earlier, she was talking about the rebranding kind of the way they went about it yeah. and that it was a lot of staff feedback. Can yeah. you talk about that a little bit from staff perspective? Yeah, I mean, well, I still, I do still love Scotty, but um, <laughs> yeah, always will. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, you see all these breweries coming around up and around you and it's like they're hip and cool and you go out and you see all these young people and then you come to our tasting room and there's like 80 year olds and children and you're like this is, I kind of want to go be with younger people so um I think that was one of the big things that we saw as a staff as staff is like you know and then you you, you know you talk to people from out of town or you know around town and it's like oh where do you want to go drink a beer and it's like oh they want to go to South Slope or somewhere like that and it's like well, but there's Highland, and it's like, yeah, but, you know, yeah, it's kind of, meh. Um, and I mean, now we're having, like, amazing concerts out here, and we have the rooftop, and the meadow, and the event center, so it's like, yeah, there's always something going on here, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, because we're on film and can't really show it, can you describe just kind of where in town we are? <laughs> Not in the like most populous area, I guess. Uh, well, I mean, we compared to other breweries, um, but I mean, we're probably 15 minutes from downtown, um, where you have like South Slope. You have God, probably five or more breweries within like two blocks, um, which is great because then all the drunk people just stumble from one to another. Um, but it's like, yeah, that was one thing that I was kind of like iffy about like starting at Highland was okay Highland you have to like drive to like you have to make a point but um it is cool because when you come out here you know I mean we have turkeys living out here and they love the sound of our uh, mill so because it sounds like a turkey call so they'll come out yeah and like hang out in the yard the field and um you know it's just it's nice because we do have so much more space out here and you don't get the like super intoxicated people because it's like you have to make a point to come out here. So, uh, but I mean, we still get a good amount, but not as many. I mean, <laughs> God, at South Slope, you'll be down there and people will be asking for shots at breweries and you're like, mm, no, no, <laughs> go home, go home. Yeah. Do you yeah. find that sometimes the folks who would make the point to come out to a place like this are a bit more, I don't know, beer educated sounds kind of silly, but like more knowledgeable. Considering I saw a guy chug a 16 ounce like burial beer, yes, <laughs> at burial. Yeah, I was like, mm -mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and their stuff's heavy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I have yet to see that here, thank God. But um, yeah, and and actually, it kind of um, it kind of reminds me of like Sierra Nevada, where it's like you know. You make a point to come out. I mean, by no means are we like the Disney World of beer, but um, I mean, yeah, they have the intent of, and I mean, yeah, there's a lot of beer nerds and like, you know, um, we have a homebrew club and they come out here, or the, I see the people in that like group come out here. Um, and yeah, it's usually like people who have the, like, they want to be here, yeah. not just chugging a beer. Yeah. It's a beautiful space. Oh yeah, yeah, especially in the summer. Yeah. In the fall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, at kind of a well-established brand like Highland, how how do you kind of insert your brewing philosophy, your personality, into what you're doing? The biggest thing is organizing all the documents in the back and stuff. Guys, yeah, love me for that. I feel like a secretary. I feel like every time we have somebody like filming in the back, I'm like running around with paperwork. I'm like, they probably think I'm like the secretary back here. Like, not that I'm actually brewing, but um, 
there's that and um, me being out in the community with Asheville Beer Week and Pink Boots um, and just growing up here. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I think out of all of our brewers and Bruce, like, well, actually out of all of Highland, there's only like three people who actually grew up in Asheville. Yeah, so um, me knowing a lot of the whole Asheville thing really helps. Um, I mean, I've set up collabs with The Whale and stuff like that. Um, so that always helps a lot. Yeah, let's talk a little, I wanna talk about collabs because yeah. this is one of the things we haven't asked a lot of folks about yeah. and I actually find it really interesting. Can you talk about like the process of starting a collab or even joining into? Yeah, I mean, it's typically, well, you know, the joke is that it's always like, it's a good excuse to go hang out with your friends and like chill for a day. Um, so that's pretty much, I mean, I know the people in the office will say, you know, they have their whole, the reasoning behind it and all this other stuff. But ultimately, I mean, as a brewer, we kind of see it as like, oh, you know, I like their beer. I'm friends with them. Like, great. You guys have the same kind of interest in beer or, you know, we want to learn from you. Um, that kind of thing is how I see it starting yeah. out. Um, but it's so funny because the, I mean, it's, it's just funny to watch because it always ends up with like one person brewing and the other people just standing around talking because it's like, you know, we've even joked, we're like, well, you know, if you, cause if it's multiple people, it's like, yeah, you can go throw in a handful of hops each. Like it's not, especially on the tiny system. It's like, you know, you're kind of on top of somebody if you try to all do it. Yeah. So, um, it's typically a small group of people and then you get the most people there for like photos. Just, I mean, of course, to promote it. But um, yeah, it's usually just a super chill day of hanging out. Yeah. Doesn't sound like a bad day no, at work. No, no. And then they usually bring beer to drink after. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, no, we don't need to tell you that brewing is stereotypically categorized. People tend to think that, you know, you're required to have a beard oh yeah um to brew beer do you feel that you faced challenges in brewing not necessarily in the industry or associated well actually last night i was asked by another brewer in town um because i said yeah i work at highland and they're like oh do you work in the lab i'm like no i i brew oh oh okay i'm like really um, and actually for one year for Halloween, I went as a brewer and wore a fake beard and what I wear every day for work. <laughs> it's the most comfortable Halloween costume ever. Um, it was great. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, and that's like the guys here, I think at first they kind of, they didn't know how, well, they even told me, they're like, you know, didn't know how to take it. Cause it's like, okay, we, they had to feel it. They felt like they were being censored somewhat mm -hmm. and like, couldn't like be, like typical guy locker room talk whatever that you know you want to call it um and then they actually like got to know me and it's like okay yeah you're yeah i mean i grew up with two brothers so yeah um but i mean it's and like you know talking to sarah sarah's not your typical girly girl and fits in with the guys just as well as i do uh and i actually kind of prefer working with all guys because they you don't deal with all the drama and all that other shit it's like point blank yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you've already talked about pink boots mm -hmm. a couple of times, yeah. but let's talk more about pink boots. <laughs> um, so you had a pink boots scholarship yeah. to go to Germany. Oh, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about like your experience there and just how you see it benefiting you down the road? I mean, it was amazing. It was the first time I ever left the country. Um, and it was, I was actually a little hesitant. I mean, or a little, didn't know what to expect because I was on the strip for like two weeks with women. And I was like, oh God, I'm gonna have to spend like every single minute with all these women. And, um, they actually were amazing. I mean, they were all pink boot members. Um, and it was just, oh my, I mean, and it, just like the tradition they had with the beer there was, I mean, we, and we met like the, you know, the last grown nun in the world. Yeah. Sister Doris, who was amazing. I loved it. She, um, they had like a little piece of paper kind of over the beer that she, it was like a flip top and, um, you can only buy her beer from the monastery, like from her there. 
Um, and she said, you always have to drink from the bottle because that's the only time you'll ever get to kiss a nun because her picture's on the thing. Um, but she was, yeah, she was amazing. I, I mean, she, and she talked about how she hated computers, so she had like an assistant brewer that just did all the computer work. <laughs> um, she was a spitfire, but uh, she was amazing. And just, I mean, going to the hop farms and I, t- I tell people if I didn't love Asheville as much as I did and my whole family wasn't here I would move to Germany in a second like it was and we went to a lot of little small towns and you know they have like one like one brewery and that's the brewery for the town Um, and one thing that I thought was really cool was um, uh, what uh, Zoykel beer yeah where they have a one brewery like it's only in a certain part of Germany but um there's like these little towns and each town has one brewery and these old men go and make or well no i think there's like one person who makes it and it's coal-fired brewery yeah oh yeah they make the beer and then they put it in these like metal containers that they have on the back of a truck and there's places in town that are homes that are uh zoigel homes and you have to go through this whole process if you want to be one but um and these people, we went to one that, uh, well, we went to two, but um, they moved the beer to these locations, and at that location, they ferment the beer and then serve it at their house. Like, I mean, yeah. So this one place we went had, oh, God, it was hilarious. So they had this extra, like, shed thing that you go, and they, I mean, they make food for you and all this other stuff. Their children were actually, actually serving us beer. Um, I mean, like, yay big. Um, and they kept tally of what you got on the back of your coaster. Yeah, and then you pay at the end. That's and pretty awesome. You're, setup. Yeah, you're in this. You're on these like long, you know, like skinny little German style seating um, with all these people in the town. And yeah, it's this these people's house. And then we went to another one that was very similar to that, and it was it was an amazing experience. And every beer is different because everybody ferments it differently and different yeast and different, all that stuff. So um, that was pretty amazing to see that, like just that kind of, and it's, yeah, they just, they make amazing beer and it's just, they don't, and with, like they have the Reinheitsgebel, so you can't use anything except water, malt, hops, and yeast. So they're not putting all this random shit like we do in beer, which was nice. And you know, it's a true, I feel like, you know, it's a true craft over there because you have to get, creative with just those ingredients yeah so yeah it was amazing um so pink boots also has kind of in the state gone from one statewide i guess group to now kind of regional or even city groups yep can you talk a little bit about both that change but also your involvement here yeah um so actually holly got me started on pink boots um and started like three years ago and uh, it was like, we had a Nashville chapter, but not really. And then we kind of started like a Raleigh chapter with, um, and it was like Anita who works at um, Lone Rider now and Jordan who works for Central State. Um, and Caroline who's at Lollamond. And so they kind of started it in Raleigh and um, because Anita was in Raleigh, it was, it was easy for her. And Caroline and Jordan both, like, moved a lot, like, for work. So it was easy for them to go to meetings. And I'm like, okay, I'm stuck in Asheville, and I can't leave because i got to be up at 5 a.m. tomorrow to brew. Um, so we kind of – there was lots of emails and phone calls and texts. Um, and it just kind of started it like that. And then we realized when Jordan was in Shelby – that okay we'll split it to two sides of the state and so it was like me and Jordan I got the call from Jordan she's like do you want to help me do this thing I was like sure so uh, me and Jordan did it and then Anita and Caroline did like Raleigh and um, that's when we started the whole Beard of Femme which is the festival that's um, 100% of the proceeds go to Pink Boots Society and uh, we have only like women in beer or breweries that have employee women. They co- they're the only ones that are allowed to come and they make beer for the festival. And yeah, it's, we're actually, we're having the 2019 Beard of Femme here. So just got that email. 
the other day. Holland here? Yeah, in the awesome. event center. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, so it will be indoor and indoor bathrooms. <laughs> uh, very excited about that. Because the first year we had it, it snowed outside on us. Yeah. Uh, it was freezing. But um, yeah, so, and we move it around to let everybody kind of make it easier for everybody. But um, yeah, so 2019 will be our third year doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the one of the cool things about the Beard Femme beers is that it involves not just the brewers. Oh, yeah. You're bringing in all the other yeah. staff. Can you talk, like, just from the brewer's perspective about the benefit of bringing other women from across oh, yeah. the company in? They get, I mean, from what I've seen, they get so excited because it's like, you know, and I mean, I'm, I love it because I'm like, this is what I do every day. It's kind of boring and you get disgusting at the end of the day. Like, by all means, like, do whatever you want. Go through it. And like, God, I love when we do the collabs because everybody wants to stir the mash. I'm like, yes, please go, go stir, go stir. I'll take pictures for you. <laughs> go do that. Yeah. And it's, God, it's great. I love those days. Um, but it's, yeah, it's awesome. Cause, and you know, they geek out on it and think it's so cool. And I mean, it's exciting to see that because it's like, yeah, you know, well, yeah, come hang out with me in the back some more. Like, you know, you're, you're more than welcome to. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so I do love seeing them so excited about stuff like that. Yeah. So if we had a, a woman wander in right now and say she wanted to be a brewer, what would be your advice for just like getting into the industry or getting involved in brewing? I think the mo the best advice is to like start volunteering or, you know, like, yeah, I've heard of a lot of people, male and female, who have started just by being like a bar, like the bar fly, like going to one brewery and knowing the owners and that's kind of, I mean, you know, I kind of raise my hand for Tim and stuff. Um, but yeah, like, you know, if you hear them say like, oh, well, you know, yeah, we're probably going to have to get some extra help. And it's like, mm, I'll do it. Um, so that and like volunteering, I think is the best thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what is your, what do you enjoy most about like the North Carolina industry, North Carolina beer? Um, working in that field? I mean, the community, of course, but um, I do feel like we're, made in, well, because we have so many, like we have a lot of resources in North Carolina, like we have Riverbend Malt, and um, we do have a few small hop farms that are like, you know, just owned by a family or something like that, but um, it's really cool because we can do so much we can make beer made with ingredients hundred all ingredients from North Carolina which I know a lot of other states can't say which is really cool because especially being from here it's like yeah I want to use local stuff and we made beer with local honey and so it's it's and it goes back to the Asheville thing of you know keep Asheville local so um, I think that's one of the coolest things that North Carolina kind of stands out with ever. yeah yeah so uh, we've got the, the, the fun and difficult question for you. What's your favorite beer from a North Carolina brewery other than your own? That's hard. Um, or what are just some of the beers you enjoy yeah. from other breweries? I mean, any, any brewery that makes a good lot, like Kellis or Lager, I love. Um, I mean, yeah, I've been drinking a lot of high wire lager and goza recently um and like fonta flora just because of their kind of out of the box but not to the point of putting pizza in a beer um but kind of out of the box uh but keeping it local and keeping it that and looking back to old recipes and another one uh is zebulon it, he's mike uh is awesome he uh He's a big one on bringing back old beer recipes that, I mean, he has a book that I don't know where he found it, but it's old, old, old recipes that he's had to revamp and kind of do. So um, he's, he's a genius sometimes at beer, but he's, you know, sometimes it's, if you can talk to him long enough, he's not a big on being like people thing. Yeah. So yeah, he's, he's funny. Yeah. So when you're not here, when you're not brewing, mm -hmm. what do you enjoy doing? Oh, pink boots. Well, it's usually pink <laughs> boots in Asheville Beer Week. Uh, <laughs> or it feels like it's been like that recently. Um, I mean, typically it's, you know, going out hiking. Um, 
just at, well yeah take my dogs out going to breweries um yeah just kind of enjoying Asheville yeah and all it has yeah one thing that I wanted to ask about is Asheville Beer Week yeah can you talk a little bit about the work you've done with Asheville Beer Week and just what what it is yeah so well it's it's actually hard to fit in a week <laughs> uh yeah yeah there's a lot of beer in Asheville oh yes and now we've added like um so we now have distilleries in Asheville too, and so we've let them come in as well. Um, actually, there's going to be, I talked to somebody that owns a distillery, there's going to be a North Carolina um, like spirits festival coming up, or well, September or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but um, yeah, it's uh, all kinds of stuff. We start out with, you know, like the first little party and then it goes into Highland did like a throwback with old beer and like a dance party. We, yeah, we did um, I forgot what else we did. Um, I mean, because it, <laughs> it's a little difficult. I was out on the I was out on the ground, like taking pictures for social media along with multiple other people because it's like there's, you know, at least five events a day. Yeah. Um, there's Thirsty Monk does a um, not so big beer festival that has high gravity beers and there's beer dinners and what is it Highwire does a barbecue sauce competition that you know you could have to add beer to the barbecue one of their beers to the barbecue sauce and they did a music and beer pairing event yeah that was interesting <laughs> um, and one, I remember last year, Tasty Beverage did a Bojangles and beer pairing. That was actually really good. But, um, that's cool. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then it ends with Asheville Beer, C or beer City Fest, which all the breweries in the area come. And it's, it's a cool festival. But, uh, and people dress up for it and all kinds of stuff. But um, we typically try to do, like, a collaboration brew or something like that. This year we kind of did something different where we asked, uh, brewers in town, if they had the space and wanted to, they could make an IPA. That's all. The only restriction we had, really, just make an IPA, and um, you know, name and it, promote it as Asheville Beer Week collab, uh, which we had a few breweries do, which was cool. Uh, we're still trying to find the perfect way to have them all work together and collab because putting a bunch of brewers together in one room and trying to come out with a brew. One year we came out with a white stout and it had, uh, it, was, it was terrible. It was, I was not a fan. I was not a fan. And then, you know, everybody has to bring a keg to fill and then, you know, it's, it's a whole thing. Um, so that's one thing that we're, we're still working on. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun and people come in from all over the country to come to this and it's, it's pretty intense. Like, I, you know, did not, I kind of... Um, a friend of mine who was on the board mentioned it to me. She's like, "Yeah, you should you should come like come into one of these meetings." So I did, and been on it now for well, it was before I came to Highlands, so maybe four years. Yeah. 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 How do you know how long it's been going on? I think this year was like ooh, the eight. Okay. Yeah, possibly. So it doesn't predate you by that much. No. In the industry. No. no. Um, but yeah, I mean. I think kind of the growth of something like that can parallel a lot of the changes that oh, are yeah. here yeah. In, in Asheville. Um, so that's, I mean, that's kind of, I guess, the last question that I have to ask is just how, how, how as a brewer do you look at these changes across the city, all these new breweries? You know, everybody kind of seems to have a different niche and a different area. Yeah. How big has this change been? just from your perspective especially yeah. as a local yeah oh yeah. Uh, well and my dad hates it because <laughs> he grew up here uh yeah he's not a fan of downtown and all that other stuff uh i did f he's finally drinking white zombie that's about as far as he'll go and there's one here he'll drink the pilsner and sometimes st t's but that's so he'll sometimes drink your beer oh, yeah but he'll drink his, his his keystone light all the way and i'm like oh, god no i don't know how i came out to be a brewer but um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's it's really interesting to know you know the people. Well, and I I do love it's. I always think it's funny. Uh, I see on Facebook you know people that I went to high school with and all this other stuff, and they're posing in front of Sierra Nevada with their family like in town. And I'm like, you guys don't even like really drink beer or <laughs> like it. Like, and so it's 
it's funny to see that kind of thing and people go to breweries and it's like you know they're they're excited it's fun they're going out on friday night you go to a brewery and uh whereas me it's i'm here every day and it's like okay yeah i want to go to a different brewery and have a beer and i don't want to be around all these tours um but it well and i always tell people i hate the traffic but you know tourism pays for my bills so i can't bust too much but um yeah it's definitely it's interesting like and people have asked me, you know, if I could work at another brewery, where would it be? And I'm like, because they were like, but, see, you know, Sierra Nevada is so cool. And you have New Belgium. New Belgium's the closest brewery in my house. And um, I'm like, yeah, but, you know, it's, it's automated. It's, and I'm like, I can't sit still that long in a chair and press buttons. Like, no. I have to have do it, be doing something. Um, so, you know, I think it's a great thing. Um, people have fussed because, you know, there's a lot of these bigger breweries are bringing people from out of town to come work for them and not hiring as many locals as people would like to see. Um, but you know, I, I can't fuss too much because, you know, sometimes it's like, yeah, but you know, do you have the experience though to be hired by them? If not, then yeah, no. Um, it's like, you know, you got to work your way up to that point. And yeah, you know what? They'll probably send you to Chico or wherever. Like, you know. Um, but it's it's good. I like the... I mean, I still haven't been to all the new all the breweries in town. It's, it's impossible. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's cool. Um, but I'm definitely cautious about what will happen in the future because... There can only be so much beer, I think, in one area. And when we have Asheville just promoting breweries as much as they are, it's great, but like, it, it's going to hit the fan sooner or later. So I don't know. I hope it doesn't the way it may, but um, you know, that's, it's scary for bigger guys like us and you know, these smaller breweries that, well, and I do say, you know, maybe then one day, you, you know, I can open a brewery because I'll buy, be able to buy all this cheap used equipment from Asheville. Um, but other than that, it's, you know, I really hope it doesn't hit the fan. But yeah, it's, and I mean, you know, me seeing mainly Asheville, because uh, I haven't lived anywhere else really, um, I don't know what it's like when people say, oh my God, my, you know, I have to drive like X amount of miles to my closest brewery. And I'm like, God, that's terrible. <laughs> I would not do that. Like how? Um, so, you know, you kind of get those rose colored glasses when you're in Asheville with beer. So yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, well, that wraps up the questions that I came with. Is there anything we didn't talk about just in terms of kind of helping to tell your whole story? Not that I can think of. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. We really appreciate it.